I told you I've been in ministry now for over 30 years, close to 40 years. I have even hosted some of them in this church. I've hosted some of them. I remember one of them, in fact, till today in my mind, I see him as a thief. Even to today, with my understanding of, of the Christ gospel, I still see him as a thief. Because when we invited him to come to this church, he sent me a mail that he will not come until we pay so so amount of money, thousands of dollars. And because I really wanted him to come, because then I didn't understand much, I wanted him to come to this church. So we sent part of the money. He said he will not leave America till we pay the entire money. So I paid the entire money before he left America. Then he made us buy him first class ticket on British Airways, very expensive. And he made us buy two extra tickets for his PA and his keyboardist. That everywhere he goes, he goes with keyboardists, as if we don't have. Some pastors will even come with 18 intercessors. They are coming to preach for you. They will come with 18 intercessors. You have to house them. You have to clothe them. You have to feed them. Don't we know how to pray? As if the church don't know how to pray. It's his intercessors that will come and pray. All these are abuses of ministerial privileges. So after we paid all the monies, this guy now calls me and says he's leaving America tomorrow. And he'll be in Uyo next tomorrow because you leave america you arrive the next day so we bought him local tickets for him and his pas and his keyboardies he calls me in the night he says right now he is in london and uh, something has just happened back home in america crisis in his ministry he doesn't know if he can still come but he's trying to see how he can quell down the trouble at home and then see what to do so at that time I called the person who connected me with him and I said, what is all this rubbish? This guy is talking. Our conference is on. He's telling me he's in London and I didn't plan for anybody to preach in his place. And we've paid him all the money. We've bought tickets. So he said, okay, don't worry. Let me call him quickly. And after a while he called me, he said, I don't think that guy has left America. He's lying to you. From the way I spoke with him, I still feel he's still in his house. He didn't leave America. I said, well, lie it a lie. If he doesn't come for this conference, he will pay to the last couple. To the last couple, he will pay. <coughs> you are laughing. <laughs> that time when I know how to pray dangerous prayers. <laughs> he will pay to the last. I will, I will, he go wound though. He go wound. But you know that kind of wound when you know they heal. He go wound. <laughs> you know he never came. He never came. And he has not paid that money till today. He has not. I decided to go after him using all my connections in America. When they descended on him and now he knew that this thing is going to go out of hand. I was preaching for one of his friends in Nigeria. He told his friend to beg me. Anything I want he will do. Even if I want him to come, he will come and, and, and pay for that visit and all that. When I went to his friend's church to preach and the friend met me in the hotel and begged me. I looked at his friend and said, if that guy is your friend, even you, I'm afraid of you. I told him, he said, please. He said, if you want, we can refund the money. I said, I don't need the money. How much can he pay for all the damages he caused? I just told the friend, no worries. But you know, that's how you hinder the gospel. That's how people hinder the gospel. Some of them have come to this church, they charge money. We pay them. I have all the emails. All the emails are there. This week I went through my old files. I saw many of their emails. They contract. They will send you contract like business. You will sign. They will sign. Then you will pay. Men of God. Men of God. When you hear me attack prosperity, I saw Shege in prosperity, miss. No character, no integrity. It's all about greed and money. Some of you who have never done ministry, even in the village, you just be talking, how ah, can Dr. Damina be attacking people? Something I have done for close to 40 years, if I speak, everybody should stand still and listen. If I was in the army, I'd be a general right now. Don't try this thing. Am I communicating? And some of them have PAs who do these dirty jobs for them. Some of them have agencies. Say, speak to my agent. They have agencies. Deposit $50,000 and you will balance once the event is over. The Aquaibom State Governor one time had a relationship with me. I was in America preaching. He called me from America and said, Damina, can you get this preacher for me? And that day I was preaching for that preacher in America. I said, oh, you called at the right time. I'm preaching for him today. He said, we need him to come to Aquaibom and preach for the government. 
So I say, Your Excellency, can, can the state government send me a letter quickly so that I can back it up sharply? They email me a letter from government house. I sat with this man of God and I, I made him realize the importance of his coming to a quiet bomb state and what a blessing it will be for the state. And I made him realize the thousands of people that have the opportunity to hear the gospel. Then he said, okay, let me quickly check with my secretary. He checked with his secretary and called me back and he, you know, in the office. And he said to me, um, Dr. Damina, my date is free. I will come for that event for your state. He said, but they have to pay me $250,000. What? So I said to him, for what? For what? He said, I have to fuel my aircraft, both to and fro. And when I live like that, when I live even for one day, it costs me a lot of money. $250,000? Hmm. I didn't call the governor back. The next day, the governor called me. Ah, Dr. Damina, how is it going? I said, Your Excellency, I didn't call you because I don't know how this is going to sound. Me, I don't operate like this, oh. This guy is saying you should pay $250,000 for that. And it was going to be a 25-minute preaching. So the governor said, what is he coming to say like that? <laughs> I said, your excellency, I truly don't know what the man will say that we have not said. He said, tell him to forget it. Tell him to forget it. Tell him. How can a preacher ask you to pay money into his account before he comes? Is he a contractor? Is he a contractor? I know of another preacher who came to Nigeria here. And the reason why I share these stories is not to make them look bad. It's to make you not behave like that tomorrow. That's all. Bible says we learn from those who have gone before us. We learn from those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. And we also learn from those who behave like that how not to behave. Am I teaching here? They didn't read it about the spies, but the two that came with good report and the ten that came with bad report. We learned from both examples. Much more when it happened in my very eyes. He came to Nigeria to do a minister's conference in Lagos. This guy is wealthy already in America. He came to Lagos. Over 10,000 pastors travel all over Nigeria to Lagos for the conference. And then at the end of the conference, he now asks every pastor to write the prayer request of his ministry and sow a dangerous seed. That they will take the prayer requests back with them to America and raise an altar for the Nigerian pastors. Pastors who couldn't even afford transport were closing down their accounts and adding money because they are going to raise an altar of prayer for their ministries. The pastors gave and gave. The money was too much. How did I know that? One of his main staff, his direct assistant, is my friend who resigned from his ministry after that conference. So I asked my friend, why did you resign from this global ministry? He said to me, Dr. Damina, I couldn't stomach the evil that happened. How can we come to a place like Nigeria? Before we came, we raised money all over America. We went to churches. We are going to Africa for outreach, support. Churches raised money in, in hundreds of thousands of dollars and gave to us. So we didn't have any need for money. We had more than enough. We've been overpaid by American churches. Then we now came and these pastors traveled. Some of them you see their shoes. Some of them you see their suit. You want to cry. And this man stood before them with, 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 with deceptive tears in his eyes. He was crying that the Lord told him if they would just, if they would just give sacrificially, you know, and attach it to their prayer request, God is going to move in their ministries like they have never seen before. And he just, wow, massaged and deceived them. And pastors started closing their accounts and brought monies. He said money, 10,000 pastors. He said what broke his heart was that that night when they got to the hotel they removed all the prayer requests burnt it with fire carried the money put in their plane and flew he said he told him in the aircraft you are more wicked than satan i will no more work with your ministry if i had my way i would drop off this jet and look for a plane to go back home that was the end of he said he looked at him and he said leave me and jesus to deal with that when money enters your heart when money when the love of money enters a man's heart the way he does ministry, even Jesus is surprised. <laughs> am I teaching? I said, am I teaching? If such people pray and say in Jesus' name, I will not say amen. I have rejected such relationships. I have rejected such friendships. I have turned down such relationships in my life. Time and after time again. If money was my pursuit in ministry by now, I will have not been living in a choir ball. And I'm not joking. I will have had a private jet by now. I will have been living maybe in America or the UK or Europe. And I will have been flying my jet because that's, that's my pursuit. I will have gotten it because the people I was hanging around, all of them have jets. But that's not what, that's not, that's not what I was, that, okay, so after the jet and all that, what next? After all of that, what next? What's the value of life? What's the value of life? 
I keep away from them totally with my life. I don't even listen to their preachings because such people, they have dangerous influence. If you hang around them, they influence you even from afar. He said, you don't make a charge so the gospel is not hindered. The truth of the matter is, once you make a charge, it takes away the ministry from what it is. Once you make a charge, it takes away the ministry from what it is.